Hello everyone, welcome back. We know very well that databases are used for creating and managing the databases, where these databases are the repository for storing the data. So why we need databases? Because we need to store the data as well as retrieve the data effectively. At the same time, the database management system, simply DBMS, must serve as an interface between the end user and the DBMS software. Let's assume I want to book a train ticket and all the train related information are stored in the database. Suppose if we are accessing a screen for seeing what are all the trains that are available, so there is an interface to see all the train related information from where the train related information are displayed on the screen. Actually, the screen what we are seeing is just the front end, but the data that are stored are in the back end, which we call as the databases. Whenever we need some data from the databases, we need DBMS. This acts as an interface by fetching the data from the database and providing the relevant information on the screen. Coming to the train ticket reservation, let's say I have reserved a ticket. Once the train ticket is reserved, the data are actually stored in the databases. Now, whenever I want to see the information about the tickets that I have booked, I simply supply the PNR information, the passenger name record information. Now, this PNR information is required so that our data is referred using PNR information and we are able to retrieve the desired information on the screen. So, any organization when they want to store and effectively retrieve the data, they need DBMS. Now, what language they prefer? One of the widely used languages is the SQL, the Structured Query Language. Let's see the theoretical parts now. SQL stands for the Structured Query Language. Why do we need this language? We know very well RDBMS, the Relational Database Management System, where we are going to store and retrieve the data or store and manage the data effectively. We cannot simply go and store the information in the file system because handling file system is a tedious job. We know we can store and retrieve the data in files also. But coming to the structured data, storing and retrieving for the structured data in a file system is really a tedious job. And that's why we want some other system than file system for doing this operation. And fortunately, we have the best solution, the database management system. And if we are storing the data in the database management system, the storing of data as well as the managing of data are effective. And what kind of data we are going to store in the RDBMS? We are going to store the structured data. What kind of data structure we are following here? A table data structure. Say we want to store the data. We are going to create a table where our information are referred using rows and columns. So it's clear that SQL is useful in handling the structured data. And actually this SQL is based on relational algebra and tuple relational calculus. We have already seen about what is relational algebra and tuple relational calculus. This SQL is actually built upon the ANSI standard. We have varieties of softwares that uses SQL. Say for example, the RDBMS softwares like the Microsoft SQL Server, Informix, Oracle, MySQL, Sybase supports SQL. And the best thing about this SQL is the queries are using English like statements. If we are proficient in English, then writing an SQL query or a command is not a big deal because the query itself is like English like statements. Say for example, suppose I want to delete a table. If you see, this is the actual query. Delete table table name. Let's assume there is a table with the name employee. And if I don't want the table to be existing in our memory, in that case, I can simply give this query delete table table name that is delete table employee so that the DBMS software accepts this query and deletes the table with the name employee. This is exactly like an English statement delete table employee. And this is one of the most fascinating features about SQL. We have seen the basics of SQL. We will see more about SQL. Writing an SQL query is not a case sensitive one. So you can use the uppercase and lowercase combinations in order to write an SQL query. At the same time, the statements of SQL are dependent on the text lines. We will understand about this point when we see some example queries. We know in computer system, there is not only one solution for a problem. There are multiple solutions. Likewise, when we are giving an SQL query, it's not only one way to solve the problem. There may exist a multiple number of ways 
and the DBMS software picks and chooses the best way to execute the query. I mean to say, suppose if we are giving a query and the DBMS software constructs a plan for executing this query and there may be multiple plans and the system has to choose the best plan to execute the query. How the best plan is chosen? Various factors are involved like the cost. Cost is one of the factors for finding the best way to execute the query. Like I said, when a query is given to DBMS, there are multiple ways to execute that query and the system is going to choose the best way to execute the query. Now what are all the components that are involved here? SQL engine, optimization engine, query engine, query dispatchers, these are all the components that are mainly used by the DBMS in order to execute the query. Anyway, I am not going into the architecture part, but my intention is to provide some insights about SQL. So from this we have understood that DBMS is going to accept queries and gives the response. Let's see how it actually works. Let's assume there is a user and there is the DBMS software. Let's say this user wants to get some information from this database. So what he is going to give? He is going to give an SQL command or query. This DBMS accepts this query and there are multiple ways to execute that query and the best way to execute the query is chosen and finally the result is then given to the user and these results are generally tables. This is how SQL works. Let's now see what are all the various types of SQL or various sub-languages of SQL. The first one is DDL, the data definition language. The second one is DML, data manipulation language. Third one is DCL, data control language. And the last one is TCL, the transaction control language. Don't worry about this now. In the coming lectures, we are going to see elaborately about DDL, DML, DCL and TCL. Before we conclude, let's see how a table looks like. The structure of the table is generally referred as the schema and here is an example schema. This is a table which contains four columns or attributes. ID number which is the first column or first attribute. Name is the second attribute. Department name is the third attribute and salary is the fourth attribute. So talking about this table, this table is comprising of four columns or four attributes. Now this column is using number data type, this column is using character data type, this column is also using character type and this column is using number type. So talking about a schema, it is mainly dealing with the columns, the number of columns, the data type of each column. And what about the data part here? These information are the data. The ID 1001 is pertaining to John Abraham who is working for quality assurance department with this much salary. This is an interrelated data and as I already told you, this is using a table data structure where the data are stored in the tables by referring the rows and columns. In this presentation, we have seen about the basics of SQL. We have seen the various sub-languages of SQL, the DDL, DML, DCL and TCL and we also have seen what is a schema that is the structure of the table. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.